What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? It was your ma. You looking for acorns? Careful. The redneck here will shoot you. You got to watch out. I said, give him your sandwich. That's a good boy. Yeah, run. Be careful of any humans. You stay away. Stay away from us. We're fucking terrible. <laughs> All right, later. I see you. I see you over there. You're just a little guy. You getting some acorns? Okay, there you go. I was just fucking around. I don't really think you should feed bear cubs sandwiches, all right? So any of you fucking crazies out there don't need to harass me with any obnoxious micromanaging comments down there in the comments section. It was, uh, I was purely joking. And uh, that bear did the right thing in uh, running away from me uh, since I am human and I, uh, I do carry the, uh, the King Midas shit touch to, you know, basically turn anything I touch uh, into a fucking uh, ecological disaster. Anyway, uh, here we are back on the uh, that wonderful seep environment up at about 7,000 feet uh, where one of California's, uh, actually, eh, it's got a couple different carnivorous plants in this state, but probably one of the most showy ones uh, does its thing and seems to do it uh, pretty good. It has uh, no trouble getting along here on the uh, re generally harsh serpentine soil uh, at the... Uh, at uh, per, you know permanently wet environments it always needs the seeps but unlike the uh, carnivorous plants that you get on the eastern seaboard or up in the uh, northern part of the country uh, this one actually needs cool running water it's not uh, complacent with the the, the warm uh, kind of silty shit it needs the uh, fresh cool clear cold running water and uh, that that uh, plant of course would be this one darlingtonia Californica, and you can see here it is the tops of these stems are just uh, just basically glimmering in the sun in the autumn sun the early autumn sun and again here you got those wonderful uh, translucent cells in the top that uh, are basically acting like little windows help the bug get trapped the bug the bug goes in there okay and then it gets stuck in there and then you know you could just uh, if he was smart, just come right out this, right back out the way he came in, out the lower end. But instead, due to these translucent cells, he keeps uh, trying to fly toward the light to get out. And of course, it's a death trap for him. He ends up eventually just falling back down, giving up, tying himself up, falling back down, and then it's being slowly digested by the enzymes at the bottom of what is basically a, I don't know if this would be considered a stem or a leaf. I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably just a leaf. But, uh... Regardless, a wonderful plant, Darlingtonia Californ Californica, Saraceniaceae is the family, same family as the pitcher plants uh, over there on the east, clo east coast. But remember, pitcher plant uh, is a common name and it can re refer to a couple different uh, uh, genera and families. So there's the fruits right there. Little capsule just waiting to uh, basically dry out and then uh, just come open at the seams and uh, disperse the seed everywhere. Okay, there you go, here's Aspidotus densa. The whole genus Aspidotus uh, is mostly in California, in uh, Mexico. Uh, I believe Baja, perhaps Sonora too. Uh, anyway, uh, Aspidotus is obviously in the Teradaceae. Remember a trademark of the Teradaceae is those, uh, see how the, the leaf margins right there are rolled over, curled over like that? They got the false endusia. Remember, endusium is just a little scale that protects the sori and the goddamn ferns. I know ferns can be a fucking headache, you know, because a lot of them, I mean, be honest, a lot of them just look the same, you know, but they are, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty uh, bare bones of botany right here, you know, just the green pigments. Anyway, that's enough with the fucking hand lens and the showy shit. You can see what's going on. But uh, here it grows. This is Aspidotus densa growing on the uh, Ultramafics. Growing on the ultramafic rocks, you know, they could be a little bit bigger than this. This is a tiny one because we're up at 7,000 feet. It's indicated by that goddamn mountain hemlock down there, Suga Mertensiana. See that drapey bastard? See that? 
See how draped he is? You can tell he's obviously a, he's a, evolved to deal with a lot of snow. He's generally a high altitude tree. You see that mountain hemlock, you're up at the high elevations. But here's that uh, Aspidotus dense again, like I say. And, and that there, this, this is a juicy bastard back there, that succulent guy. That's a species of sedum. And there's a lot of different species of sedum uh, in Northern California, you know? Especially on these uh, serpentina habitats like you get here. You know, so you get the, the more, uh, obviously, the, the more stressful of the environments and the more variety of the environments, you get a lot more speciation. But uh, what's, what's that down there? Is that a, it's a phlox, I think. Anyway, so Aspidotus densa, real interesting fern. And I believe uh, Aspidotus densa is uh, almost always on serpentine. Look at that, it's a gentian. Don't you like gentians? Everybody likes gentians. Look at that pretty blue. That's nice. A lot of diversity in it. There's gentianella down here we've seen. There's that goddamn hemlock. So anyway, uh, back over. Oh yeah, look at that. There's more. There's more to it. Oh, look at this bastard. He's still going off. He looks pretty good. Hey, looking pretty good. Th okay, so here, you know, back at that, uh, that Darlingtonia little seep right here. Oh, look, it's an 80 anthem. Look at this a little maiden here. How about that? <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, so the Darlingtonia's basically all this thing is right here. It's just a leaf. It's just a modified leaf that's uh, hollow inside. You can see all the veins and shit. You know, all the veins, and of course, you got the translucent window cells. Uh, it's just uh, basically a, a leaf that's been hollowed out so that the bugs go in there and, uh, you know, then they get trapped. They can't get out. And I believe, uh, you know, the, the plant relies somewhat on bacteria uh, within there, within its own little cells to basically help digest the bug, but then it does secrete some of its own enzymes too, you know. But again, it's the only species of Saraceniaceae that you get uh, up here. Uh, actually, it's the only species of Saraceniaceae in California. And again, it's caused because here's that serpentine soil again. In this case, the nitrogen uh, deficiency that was the reason for this plant to evolve carnivory, well, it's not necessarily the reason. It's probably a lot more complicated than that in terms of uh, the vast expanses of geologic time required for, you know, plants to evolve habits or uh, morphology, etc. But, uh, you know, the lack of nitrogen, while well, I'm trying to say is the lack of nitrogen comes from this harsh fucked up rock, serpentine, you know, which of course is the California state rock and is of course deficient in both calcium and nitrogen, uh, but also abundant in uh, relatively toxic uh, minerals such as iron and magnesium. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice money shot at the top of that picture with the translucent window cells. They used to, I think a common name for these was cobra lilies, you know, because it, it looks like a cobra, I guess, I don't know. Could look like a lot of shit. But, of course, they're not a lily. No relation whatsoever. Oh, here's a nice roadie. Nice rhododendron. Ericaceae. You know, which, of course, uh, likes the bogs and the acidic soils. And I believe this one used to be in a genus Leedum, but is now in a rhododendron. And it was a name for it, something T. I forget the name. I don't know. Who the fuck cares about common names? They're way off mark in most cases. Oh, yeah, and then you just got lodgepole pines. Lodgepole pines, these ones, they got needles in a fascicle or two, and they call them lodgepole pines because they grow pretty straight up and erect, you know? And it, they, they just, the, the diameter, I mean, they can get big, but in most cases, the diameter stays just the perfect the width for a, a, a lodgepole. They got real creative on that kind of name, huh? <clears throat> but anyway, the lodgepole pines grow in a wet shit, too. They, they, they can handle the wet feet. Uh, surprisingly, more often than not, you'll see them grow, growing in these, you know, uh, somewhat uh, wet and baggy uh, mountain meadows and what the shit. It's fucking weirdo. Polly stick them. <laughs> it's a goddamn. He's so frilly. How does he get so frilly? You're so frilly. Then he got the spores on there. Look at it. Look at his little spore maces. Ugh. Gross. Am I am I sexually accosting this fern right now? Is that what's going on? Jesus. Anyway. Okay, so back here over by the streamside where it sounds like an old man taking a leak, you know, he's got maybe a 
He's having trouble getting the night. He got a prostate problem or something. Anyway, here's a, here's another wonderful member of the Gentian family. And uh, this guy, again, uh, was filed in the dainty little bastard department. Okay? This is a Gentianella uh, Amarella. Again, Gentianaceae. Real nice little family of uh, of uh, for herbaceous shit. The Gentians. Fraser is in a Gentianaceae, the fucking monument plant. It can live 80 years. And then you get these little dainty bastards, too. And it fucking shadow's killing me. God. Look at those hairs. Fucking hairs popping out of a Corolla like that. You know, and I've tried to look for apomorphies for Gentianaceae before. That is, you know, trademarks that are a result of shared ancestry. And I just, I kind of fucking can't. There's not any solid ones that I've looked for, you know? Yeah, it is, that's a nice looking guy though. And here you got a little baby darling Tonya popping up with the Gentianella in the background. Oh yeah, do you like the bear exposures? You like the bear environments? You like the bear and rocky shit? Huh? You like the hot shit? This ain't too hot right now. It's pretty fucking cold actually. I brought some goddamn gloves. Some nice little railroad issued gloves. Anyway, there you go. There's a nice ultramorphic soil. Remember, you got the excess amounts of uh, uh, magnesium and iron, relatively low in calcium and nitrogen, relatively nutrient poor. But the uh, pine is Jeffrey. I had a Jeffrey Pines, uh, whose fragrance I've been smelling on this whole goddamn hike the past, I don't know, half a mile. Uh, it's kind of got a butterscotch fragrance to it. The pine is Jeffrey. I don't seem to mind the harsh ultramorphic soils at all. Look at that serpentine up there, those bear exposures. Remember, they're bear, uh, both because, of course, it's summer dry here, and uh, also because mainly the chemistry of that soil. This makes it very hard for anything to grow. Just a bunch of barren, rocky shit, but, of course, that's where you get the interesting plant species. In the stressful environments, you get a little bit more diversity, and you get some of the endemic plants that can better handle this. But can we talk about this? I'm filming here. What are you doing? Could you stand to the side, for Christ's sakes? Give you some fucking beef jerky, and now you just think you own my ass. Get to the side. Get on the sidewalk, Jack. Over here. You yeah, get off. Come on. Thank you. Anyway, there you go. Nice ultramafic exposure. Always love the serpentine. Always love the ultramafics. Remember, that's associated with subduction zones. And, of course, uh, you know, nobody even knew the plate tectonics were going on pre uh, the 1960s i mean alfred wegner did but nobody believed him they thought he was full of shit turns out they were full of shit anyway let's see what else we got down here fucking made of myself i can't remember any goddamn names for half these genera i've been in the southwest for six goddamn weeks now i'm back in my home state in familiar territory in an area i've been plenty of times i can't remember some of the genera here you know i fucking maybe it's because i need a damn energy drink which then i look in the mirror myself then and i think why do i need a goddamn energy drink I should be pushing a shopping cart outside of Dollar General, you know, and crying to myself about my bad life choices. What the fuck's wrong with me? Anyway, here's a nice species of Ariagonum. The sulfur buckwheat. Look at this bastard. Look at that goddamn... Look at it. Get up there and look at it. Look at that humble. A, a tight cluster of tiny little yellow flowers. Only thing blooming here at 7,000 feet in uh, mid-September. It's nice, dummy. It's, it's, been, it's been nice out here. Oh, here's a nice yarrow, Achillea millifolium. You got that guy, too. And the, the Jeff Pines. And you, oh, that looks like it might be a Pinus albicollis over there, the white bark pines. And then, of course, over there, you got the uh, Quercus vexinifolia, the huckleberry oak, which uh, has, let's see if it's got any acorns in it. They got acorns on them sometimes. You could just eat the acorns right off the goddamn bush, you know. But again, it is an oak. It's a true Quercus, and, it uh, you know, here it's topping out at about two feet tall. And it likes these higher environments. You never see, this is never a tree. It's always a shrub. Oh, God damn it. Now, there's no acorns on it. But when there are acorns on it, you just rip them right off, throw them in your mouth, eat them. Eat them straight off. That You don't got to leach them or nothing. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look at this ultramafic rock, huh? Almost looks like it might be peridotite. that didn't get fully metamorphosed. Huh? How do you grade these things? I wonder. Look at, the, look at the little bits of plated minerals and shit in there. God, I love it. I love it. You can tell it's got iron in it. Look at that red. Look at the oxidized shit. Huh? 
Oh yeah, the barren environments. And then of course, wherever you got the serpentine in California, you're normally gonna have some of this guy, Streptanthus brassicaceae. That's a first year seedling. And then here's a second year seedling. I believe most of them tend to be biennial. And I'm, I believe this guy is Streptanthus tortuosus with those perfoliate leaves. And then of course, you got the Salix right there. Remember the fruit some brassicas called the Salix. Almost looks like a little peepaw, but it's not. It's not a legume. Yeah, so, you know, and then you got another genus, Colanthus, which looks like Streptanthus and is in the same family, and they're very closely related. The flowers, it's too, you know, it's too bad we're late in the season. Can't see the flowers. They're called jewel flowers for a reason, because they're fucking joyous to be around. You know, but anyway, so, you know, and this, they're flat. On Colanthus, the Salix are cylindrical, Okay. But like I said, all this shit's mostly done here. The buckwheats are done. And yeah, this is little Areophyllum, Confortiflorum, Confortifolia maybe. And woolly sunflower over here. You got another one of those sulfur buckwheats, Areogonum umbilatum. Got an astragalus. That guy's done too. You know, you just, I mean, the basic idea is simple. You just come out here and try to figure out what the shit you're looking at. They got enough apps and everything. They could tell you what, you know, you, they could figure some shit out. You look at what... You not only look at what is growing here and figure out what it is, you look at what family it's in, and then you figure out what's the ecology of it. You just try to get a basically a, a good story, a good background of every plant. You know, it's a, okay, pretend there's a, you know, just like you would with a people. Say there's some guy, uh, you know, you're lurking on the internet, you want to figure out about him because you're going to go uh, knock over his house when he's out of town with a, you know, back the U-Haul up to his house. I'm just kidding. Anyway, what the same thing though, just pretend. What you want to do is find out what he's into, you know, if he's got any uh, things he could uh, exploit, or uh, what's on his hard drive, maybe you could blackmail him. And so you just want to get a good picture of the guy, uh, you know, before you have any plan about him. Same thing with the plants, except I'm not planning nothing with the plants, except just to take some nice pictures of him. You know, and it's the same thing, that's basically what I do anytime I end up uh, in a new spot. You know, I try to get a good inventory, a good checklist of all the shit that's growing there with a nice profile of what I'm looking at too. Ecological history, evolutionary history, i.e. what family it's in, what other shit it's related to. Oh, there's that sedum again. Look at it. That's nice. There's a lot of sedum diversity in this goddamn county. It's pretty incredible. You know, you just need, you need some good context. And that's what makes plants fun. Otherwise, you're just looking at some green bullshit on the, you got, you know, you got no idea what's going on. You want it, you want chemistry, the chemistry of these things, you know, you just go into a wormhole trying, oh, there's a, there's a little facilia. Nice. Paraginaceae. Formerly hydrophilaceae. You know, and also a lot of these families have traits that, uh, you know, some families are adapted more to a certain soil type. Some families, uh, like, uh, super waterlogged soil, some families like the toxic serpentine soil, some families uh, like, uh, you know, rocky environments, rocky uh, alpine environments and what the shit. Oh yeah, there's that Aspidotus again, Aspidotus densa. Oh, remember that's the, I just said that, that's the genus that's uh, mostly in California, you get a little bit of Mexico, and this one especially, Aspidotus densa, is a serpentine endemic. Real nice one. Pteridaceae. Pteridaceae is my favorite fern family, by fucking far. One of the best, you know, aside from the Ophioglossaceae, which we tried to find last night and couldn't. Oh yeah, there's Pinus monticola, white, uh, western white pine. Some rather big ones, too. I believe this plant, this plant goes on up into uh, Oregon and Washington, possibly Idaho. They get big, but they're generally high elevation. They like it pretty cold. Oh yeah, look at that serpentine over there. That looks pretty nice. So like uh, most of the white pines, you got a five-needled pine. Very distinctive bark. Here's the cone. Real long bastard. And then further up, you got a white bark pine and foxtail pine too. Real nice one, that foxtail pine. Oh yeah, there you go. It's pretty nice. Holy shit. Kind of winded though. Not gonna lie. So again, you got the white, western white pines and you got just a smattering of uh, white bark pines. Oh, right there. See that one? It looks very distinct. It's a foxtail pine. Pinus belfuriana. It's a California endemic. It's a, 
it's really it's kind of a weird way to pee. You don't want to lift your leg in it and just okay, it's a good idea. I'll try that next time. Anyway, here's a Pinus belfuriana. You can see what I call it, foxtail pine. Pinus belfuriana is a white pine too. It just means it's got the needles in five clusters. Real nice one, but this one it's kind of looking like shit. Kind of looks like the drought, or maybe the heat got to it. I don't know. Anyway, there's more up there. All those up there. It's entirely uh, Pinus belfuriana. Let's go check it out, huh? Hey, so everything's winding down for the year, but you still got the nice talus scree environment up here at about 8,000 feet. You got a nice uh, monardella, Lamiaceae, aka coyote mint. Over here, you got that angelica again, carrot family, APACA. Then you got a real interesting plant over here called knotweed. I believe it's Davis knotweed. It's going dormant, no flowers on it. It's in the buckwheat family, Polygonaceae. You can see it's everybody's wrapping up for the season. You know? Time to time to shut the doors, close up shop. But you can see right up there, there's one of the white bark pines. See, it's got a much more open canopy, this guy, than uh, the western white pine. And they generally don't get as tall. We'll see more of them as we go up. There's another one. These things are single-handedly planted by a bird called Clark's Nutcracker, a little gray bird, and maybe a little bit smaller than a crow, maybe the size of a blue jay. Real noisy bastards, too. We'll see if we can see some. Yeah, there you go. There's a nice comparison. White bark pine next to a western white pine. You know, so without having a cones, if you have the cones, then it, you're, you're gold, your money. You could, you know, easy to decipher. These are a lot longer, and uh, these are a little bit more knobbier. And uh, they, these are the ones that have the seeds that are real nice. You can make some pesto out of those, which I've done before. You know, the Clark's Nutcracker crackers might get mad at you, but you know, you gotta tell those bastards. You can, look, you guys are gonna, you're gonna take all these things, you're gonna cash them in the ground, and you're gonna forget where half them are anyway. What do you give a shit? You know, they're not making pesto with them. They're just gonna collect them and go stash them somewhere. Anyway, there should be a lot more of them up top. You know, the ultramafic palace. Such a rare rock to see on the surface of the earth. You know, and if it weren't for the subduction zone, none of that shit would be there. You know, it might just be more boring granite or something. Yeah, I like granite, but it's, it's certainly not the ultramafics. And you don't get the cool plant endemism on granite like you do on the serpentine and the other ultramafic rocks. Oh, look at that. That's, look how shiny that shit is. You like the shiny shit? Huh? Are you, what, are you like a fucking magpie? You like that? Magpies and crackheads like shiny shit. Ooh. California State Rock right there. Serpente. Oh, yeah. So now we're high enough up and it's cold as balls enough that you can see the Pinus belfuriana, the foxtails, uh, are readily abundant. Growing on the, uh, the serpentine scree right here. Oh, yeah, a little buckwheat. It's still going off. Nice area I'm gonna probably unbelate them. Oh, shit. Some of them are dying. Wonder why some are dying. Yeah, so we're at about, I don't know, 8,500 feet. Certainly feels like it too. So you got white bark pine and Pinus belfuriana. Pinus albicollis and Pinus belfuriana. See with those little narrow branches, because the needles are short on the Pinus belfuriana. Five to a fascicle and they're short. There's a little guy right there. See that one? It's probably a 60 year old tree. Real slow growing. Oh, look at this. This is a nice astragalus. There's the fruits on it. Real weird looking fruits, huh? Of course, Fabaceae P family. I think there's over like 3,500 species of astragalus. Holy shit. So there you go. There's the serpent, serpentine, aka serpentinite. Real soapy, real waxy, soft. Doesn't hold up too well under the water or under breaking too. Pretty fragile rock. It's a metamorphic rock that has just been cooked. Oh shit. I'm out of it. What well, nice rosacea. I wonder if there's a potent tea or what. Oh yeah. God, I love metamorphic marine rocks, don't you? Holy shit, it's cold. This spot's about to be under six or seven feet of snow in about a month or two. 
As long as we don't get that damn high pressure system off the coast again, it keeps all the winter storms away. See, look how shiny the serpentine is. It's nice. And there you go. There's all the Pinus belferiana. The old growth, guys. The old bastards. The old heads. Oh, shit. There's a little Louisian. Bitterroot. Montiaceae. Karyophyllales. Same order as cacti. You know, that's one of the species of Louisia. I don't know, I don't, don't look like Red Revival, it looks like one of the other ones. Oh, look at it, there's a cone. Just, just getting ready to open. For another month. That's pretty for a pine cone, huh? Almost kind of looks like a branch lung, but you know, we won't say that out loud. Anyway, there's the needles. See, so you got, again, short needles, but in a fascicle of five and a bunch of five. So it gives it a real nice look. That's why they call it foxtail pine. Then they get kind of dangly and shit. You know, the branches, as the older needles fall off, but the branch keeps growing, and you get these little, you know, it gets a kind of a dangly appearance. But to be honest, these kind of look like shit up here. I don't know if they're just taking a hit from, still taking a hit from that drought a few years ago or what, but, uh, they kind of look like they're drying out, you know? They don't look too nice. I'm, I'm going to be honest, they don't look too nice. And again, it's a California endemic species. You can see many more over there. Go down those bare slopes. You know, and this is a tree that you try to grow this at lower elevations, you just you're good luck, you're not going to have a chance. It's not, you're not going to have any luck. They need the cold, they're adapted to the high altitude. And so, uh, you know, as the climate's, uh, as the climate's changing, as we get a lot of summers, less snowy winters, uh, this might be a, uh, a casualty, you know? This might be uh, some of the collateral damage, you know? I mean, try not to trigger the ORGs out there. <laughs> the absolute racist people. I'm just fucking with you guys anyway, you know? I know every race doesn't think he's actually racist. Eh, it's got nothing to do with being racist. I'm just joking around, you know, because I happen to notice the thing goes hand in hand. You know, Grandpa starts talking about how he doesn't believe in climate change, you know, and then he says he lets a, you know, one, one or two slurs out. You know, it's okay. It's an older generation. You can just call it what it is. Be honest about it. I'm not shitting on anybody. Not too bad, at least. I'm just fucking around. You just ease up before you get your panties in a bunch and leave me some mean comments. I mean, you could leave me mean comments. I don't care. I'm kind of entertained by it if you want. How old do you think this guy is? I think he's probably 70 years old. These, these fuckers live a long time. They are pretty closely related to the bristlecone pines, which are, uh, you know, the longest living uh, non-clonal tree in the world. Yeah, so no, I should probably get down here before uh, the sun sets on my aces. It's getting kind of chilly. Anyway, there you go. Pinus Belfuriana, everybody. With a cameo by the, uh, the ultramorphic racks and what the shit. That's all I got for you tonight. Go fuck yourself. Okay, so that, that's the other thing I want to mention right here. Is that, you know, as you can see that guy, this little one right there. Okay, these cones take a couple years to develop. They're not just one season. All right, so that's why this guy's still going. He's not big yet. He probably just got fertilized, pollinated, whatever his shit. You know, by the wind pollinated, uh... Well, they got the micro -strobolite. The conifers are complicated. Conifers are entirely wind pollinated, of course. You got the micro and the mega -strobolite. And mega -strobolite is just a fancy word for female cones. Micro is just a fancy word for the, uh, for the male cones, which are a lot smaller. And, uh, of course, you're not going to find any here because you're not releasing pollen right now. You got to be here in about June for that, probably. Maybe a little bit earlier. But, uh, anyway, so this got one of those pollen grains was windblown, landed on, on this on her, and it pollinated her, and uh, now she's, you know, she's got to go through another season, and then uh, next year, about this time, she'll be, uh, she'll be right up to size like that. So, you know, a couple conifers are like that, too. They, they're not, they don't mature in a single season. It takes them a little bit longer. But uh, you can see, it's kind of, kind of cute, huh? It's a cute little shit. And of course, those white lines are those, uh, just the stomata, just stomatal wax, the cuticle wax, basically on those needles, which certainly uh, adds some flavor to it, does it not? 
There you go. Here's a big old boy. Pinus cerebrocolis, white bark pine, another five needle pine. Get up there, check it out. You got uh, more needles than a fascicle of five and a bunch of five. A little bit longer than the uh, foxtail pine, a little bit shorter than the western white pine. So all in total, you got three species of white pine up here. And everybody loves the white pines. I like the white pines more than the uh, the tree needle pines, like the ponderosas and Jeffries and shit. That's just my personal preference, though. It's too bad we can't find a cone of this this uh, white bark, though. You know, God, it looks like shit, too. These are, I wonder if these are going to be here in 100 years. You know, as the climate changes. And it's just, I, I know some people fight that. You know, the reason people don't like it when you say that, and it, it is, you know, a lot of the, the older guys, man, maybe some of the younger guys, too, is they just, they can't, it doesn't jive well with the way they think the world should be. It, it's a fact that doesn't conform to the reality that they uh, want to prescribe to, you know, that humans have a large effect, a large impact on the planet, you know. I don't know, I mean, I've traveled a lot, so to me it's no wonder that 8 billion fucking human beings can change the composition of the atmosphere. And it's certainly not a wonder to anybody who, you know, knows that sh anything about physics, that carbon dioxide traps heat, but the fact just, uh, you know, I mean, at this point we're fucked, what can you do about it? But it, would, it might be nice to institute a couple changes, but again, you're not going to do that by... You know, using recycled carbon toilet paper, you know, the change has to come up on a higher levels. You know, I mean, you could do whatever you want to feel good, but wiping your ass with a low carbon toilet paper is not going to do anything. What we really need is some infrastructural changes. But again, that threatens people, so, uh, yeah, whatever, what you going to do? Isn't that nice? Look at that big ass basin over there. You think that was ever glaciated? How about that? 